talking to each there other. There we go, live. Live on Facebook. Live on Facebook. Yeah, we're it's, live. Yeah, we're we're live at five on Facebook. I'm Mike Mason. Welcome to the HCRJ live at five on Facebook Live. Just, what in just hanging here, ready to go live? But what is what truly? What on earth is going on, Rabbi Gross? I can't even tell. Is that you? Yeah, it's me. What? Why are you frowning? Everybody. You look like you're you're frowning. Are you unhappy? Oh wait. Oh, are you I'm happy? Are you doing a handstand? Yeah. <laughs> I'm confused. What? Hey, high five. High five. Okay, this is uh, this is there different. There we go. There we go. This is new. There, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Why? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't notice anything different. You look well. You look healthy. You look Thank strong. You. you look like you have just been taking advantage of this time at home, maybe getting some exercise. Are you eating differently or something? I'm just eating peppers, lots of peppers. <laughs> those, those, those fancy upside down peppers that you were telling me about. Oh, am I upside down? I, I don't think you're upside down. Are you upside down? No, I think I'm right side up. You look you, good. You know what? As you mentioned, it you look upside down. Oh, I'm upside down. You're upside down. Oh, okay. Hang on. Let me, uh, let me see if I can right side up myself. Hold, hold on here. Maybe this will fix the whole thing. Oh, that's better. Oh, thanks. There, we're That's both better. right side up. Now we're both right side up. I'm All sure. All right. That. Okay, so wait a second. I know what you're doing here, Rabbi Gross. I wasn't born yesterday because <laughs> if I was born yesterday, I would have been born the day before April Fool's Day. Are you playing yes. an April Fool's trick on me? April Fool's. <laughs> All right, I'll right my wrongs. <laughs> Oh man, you really got me that time, Rabbi Gross. I don't know where you went. I think you turned off your video. I mean, you, you must be pretty upset. I don't, I don't know what's going on. You left me, and now I'm here all by myself. But that's all right. I can handle this. Um, in the meantime, while we wait for uh, while we wait for Rabbi Gross to to come back with us, um, say hey to us if you are on our facebook live here i see carol is here i see that michael kingsley is here i see that we've got some people watching and we love that you are watching with us here um so it's interesting timing that you are here with us it's interesting timing to be with us in april which is yes we are all on our on our own sort of time frame, right? Every day is a little bit different. Oh, wow. Hello there. I think you're muted, but that's okay. Every day. Are you muted or unmuted? I'm unmuted. Okay. There I'm you back. are. You, I, I, uh, I, I, I accidentally turned off my computer. <laughs> typical, typical. So, I was just telling everyone that we're all sort of on our own rhythm and we are, we've passed from March. We've literally passed over boom from March to April. And if you look at our calendar, right, our calendar year starts over in January and January is the first month, right? So January is the first month, first, first month, February is the second month. March is the third month. April is the, fourth month wow. and we've just passed over from march to april and now that i think about the number four i'm thinking that there's quite a few important things that happen with this holiday that's coming up that relate to the number four rabbi gross am i on track here or am i off are, base a little bit you are on track in fact this live at five is sponsored by the number four huh. many is four one, two, One, two, three, two, four. That's how many four is. Oh. Four questions. We have four sons. We have four cups of wine. And what's it all for? It's for Passover. Huh. Well, can you tell me why this is such a significant number? Like you mentioned all these four things, but let's, uh, as we say in the biz, let's break it down. Let's break it down. All right. Let's start with the Four cups, because the Passover Seder is actually broken into 
four parts. Each part is connected to four cups of wine. And those four cups of wine are based on four promises that God makes in the book of Exodus. In fact, I have my handy dandy Bible here, my Tanakh, and I open to the book of Exodus, and there are four promises that God makes in the book of Exodus. The first promise is that I will redeem you. That means to set you free. I will redeem you. Uh, oh, no, that's not, that's the third one. The, the first one is, first one. I will free you. All right. And then I will deliver you, that take you out of Egypt, deliver you. And but, that third huh. promise is, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm, an arm a, of compassion and love. And finally, I will, uh, I will, uh, take you to be my people. So we've got four promises there. I will free you. I will deliver you. I will uh, um, uh, redeem you with an outstretched arm, and I will take you to be my people. That's four promises four. God makes. Four. And for those four promises, we have four cups of wine. Oh. It's the structure of our Seder. But before I tell you about each of these four cups, I have a little Seder quiz for you. How about that? Oh, for me? Oh, great. Well, whoever might be watching right now, do we have well, people watching? We do. We have uh, Carol Wilson says, hello, family. It's me. Hello, Carol. Michael Kingsley says, sup, people. To you, Michael Kingsley and family, we say, sup. Sharon Wolfson says, Brooke and Logan Wolfson's Bubby here in Maryland is with us. And Jerry Doctor says, hi, Steve. Hello, everybody. So let me, here's your quiz. Okay, I'm ready. Who are watching, and Mike, you can play too. Okay, let's do it. Those of you who are watching, this is the quiz that will rattle your mind. Can't wait to have my mind rattled. Are you ready? The rabbis argued back and forth what was the minimum amount of wine that you could put in each of those cups. Not the maximum. Certainly, you could fill it overflowing. I know the answer. The minimum amount of wine that you would have to drink each time you did the Kiddush, each time you did the blessing over the wine, what was the minimum amount of wine that you should drink to fulfill that commandment to drink of those four cups? Uh, so here's the quiz. Okay. All right. One of the questions, one of the ideas was that you would drink one quarter you put enough wine to fill one quarter of the wine per cup, right? So if it was a bigger cup, you'd have a little bit more wine, a little smaller, but each, as long as you filled the cup to one quarter full, that would be enough. That would be the minimum amount. That's one, all right? Answer number two is the amount of liquid displaced by one and a half eggs. <laughs> That's extremely specific. Very specific. Here's the egg. Now imagine putting this into a cup of wine and it displaces the wine and then one half more. So one and a half eggs worth of wine. All right. That's answer number two. Answer number three is, you see this? I do. Now, of wine that was the size of a large olive. Maybe with the pimento, maybe not. But maybe with blue cheese or something? Could be that, could be a little yeah. I don't know, but the amount of, uh, this, this, this would be it. The Hebrew word is kazait, kazait, not gazuntait, kazait. Good, yeah. The amount of, uh, of one olive. So answer number one, a quarter. a quarter of a cup of whatever the size of the cup is. Answer number two, the amount of liquid displaced by one and a half eggs. Okay. This is brought to you by Dave and Buster. It sure is. Or number three, the amount of wine that would take the place of one large olive, kazite. All right. <laughs> All right. That's the question. 
Now, I will answer that question because I want people to go ahead, put in your comments, figure out what you think it is. Answer one or two or three. We'll get back to the answer in just a moment. Let's talk about what happens in each of those four cups. The first cup of wine that we drink is called the wine of sanctification or the wine that says, thank you, God, for Passover. Thank you, God, for this special day. We recognize that this is a very sacred holiday. It's our festival. So it's called the Festival Kiddush. And with this cup of wine, we do the candles and the wine as a welcoming of our festival meal, our festival Seder together. That's part one, cup of wine number one. Cup of wine number two is the telling of the Passover story that we need. This is the mitzvah that we need to tell the story of our past so that we can make a difference in the world in the future. And what's the story of our past? The story, very simply put, is that we were once slaves in Egypt. God redeemed us and took us out and set us free into the world from being slaves into freedom. And that is what we're celebrating with the hope that we will make a difference in the world in the same way. The phrase that we use in that story, until all are free, none are free. Cup number four is a cup that we drink after we eat our meal. And we say, thank you God for this great meal that we shared. And cup number four is the cup that is called Hallel. We, we are just the, the cup of praise that God is worthy of praise for all these great things. And we often sing songs and we conclude our service with the words next year in Jerusalem. That's the Seder in a nutshell, divided into four separate parts. Now, before we get to the other fours and what the purpose of those other fours are, the four questions and the four sons, let's see what people thought of my three-part question. Well, we've got, um, we got one, we got an answer here that I think it pretty much sums up what everyone's thinking at this moment. And it's yes. from Sarah Miller, who yes. says, none of those sound like enough wine per cup. And I agree with her. <laughs> so based on that, I'm going to guess if I had to think, if I had to make an, an uneducated guess between the quarter of a cup and the olive size and the one and a half eggs, I'm going to go just because our motif today is four. I'm going to go with the quarter cup of wine. Quarter cup would be the most logical. That would be the most logical. But here is the thing about ancient times. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have set measurements. Oh. So Got they me again. These unusual things like hands breaths, like what the heck is a hands breath, right? So the actual answer is the egg. What? Minimum amount of wine that you should have in your cup is the amount of wine that is displaced by one and a half eggs. I'm sh that is just such preposterous. A strange measurement. Preposterous. <laughs> All right. So you ask. We've covered four cups of wine. Uh huh. What should we cover next? Well, I um, I've always been been really interested in the uh, in the four sons, and I've always been accused of being one of the four sons. But I'm not the telling you which the one. Glasses. The son with the glasses and the very the beard that is filling out rapidly. That's the son I've been accused of. So. Why, why are, what's the significance of the four sons? Is it related to the four parts of the Seder meal? Is it related to the four cups of wine? Is it related to four heads? <laughs> what in the world is it related to? It's uh, related to the fact that these four sons happen to be very different people. They have very different personalities and they actually are very different ages. And uh, our audience can probably relate to that. If we aren't exactly the same as our siblings, 
and we're not exactly the same as our friends and we're not the exact same as the people that we encounter at work or wherever we may be. We all have different personalities. And the Seder recognizes this. Our tradition says that we should teach the story of our exodus and tell the story of our exodus depending on the learning style of each of uh, the people that we're telling it to. So uh, I like that. It into four different kinds of people. The first person is the wise son, the son who uh, just recognizes that the story is not a story that is set just in one time in Egypt, but rather that this story is something that happens all the time through history, that we put ourselves into that story saying, hey, our ancestors had a bad thing going on as slaves in Egypt and life here isn't perfect either. How can we, how can I be a part of that solution? That's the wise son. Then there's what they call the wicked son. It's not, he's not really evil. He's not really wicked. He's not like, you know, Dracula or something, but he is, or she, it, it should, we call it the sons. And honestly, it's four different the child. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I'll say she in this one is not evil or bad, or she just says this, this is none of my business. It doesn't affect me. This is an old story and I'm in another age. This took place in the Torah. I'm living in the year 2020. What does it have to do with me? Well, what, what's not smart about that, or what they say is, is just not right, is that this story is what compels us to change the world for the future. So the person who is not connecting to that story is uh, the person number two. The third child is the child who uh, just, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of naive, like, oh, da, 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 da. That's where most of us are most of the time. Like, hey, the world's just spinning around. I don't even know the story. I don't know. It doesn't know anything. And then the last child is the one who's so little, can't even speak, doesn't even know the questions to ask at all. And so what we need to do, how does this all come together? I'll tell you. What we need to do is teach our Seder lessons in a style that relates to each and every kind of learner. So there should be some thinking going on and some singing going on and some storytelling going on and maybe even some crazy stuff going on like hiding the afikomen. All of these things keep each of the kinds of children involved in the story. Hmm. You said on the last one of uh, the, the last child doesn't even know like what questions to ask. Like what? Like, <laughs> like four questions or something ridiculous like that. Four questions. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's like it was right there. Just waiting for me to trip right over it. Well, you tripped twice. What? There aren't really four questions. What? Qu how many are there? It's just really one question and oh. but four answers. Oh, okay. So what? I know what the question is. You know the question. Yeah, I know what the question is. The but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not I'm not telling you. Everybody knows that question. It's like, how can I make matzah taste good? That's the question. Right? Oh, that's yeah, that's so easy. That is so easy. You bry it. How do you make your matzo taste good? You bry it. You bry it and you bry it. And Michael Kingsley here said that he uh, he goes with three eggs minimum for his amount of wine. When I bry, three eggs for this guy. But just a little... bored. Today is about four. I understand that, but that would really throw off my ratio. So what what tell okay, so now I'm obviously spun around in a million circles, four sons or children, four cups of wine questions galore four parts of the seder can take it home rabbi gross i need right. a little bit more please all right let me just tell you the, the the one question is why is this night different from all other nights of the year our seder is different because on this night we do four things 
tell you a lot more than just four things, but the four things that are mentioned in the Talmud are the fact that we eat matzah instead of bread. Dessert first. Yum. We eat. Oh, uh, that's not one. That's bitter not one. herbs. Oh. All other nights, we might eat lots of different kinds of herbs. On this night, we specifically make a point of eating bitter herbs to remind us of the bitterness of slavery long ago. Huh. The third is that on all other nights, we might not even dip once. Well, maybe we dip a potato chip in some uh, onion dip. That's Yeah. Good. Yeah, I know. Or <laughs> a, a tortilla chip in some guac. Oh. But on all other nights of the year, other than that, <laughs> don't even dip once. But on Seder, we dip twice. We dip our greens or parsley or celery into salt water to remember the the sweat and the tears of our ancestors as slaves, and we dip our uh, bitter herbs into haroset. Those are the two times we dip. I'm dipping. And then finally, we're supposed to sit and relax and kick back and, and, and really, really just lounge through our meal, whereas all of the nights of the year, we're supposed to sit properly uh, at the table. Right. This back is straight, to chin up. Mm -hmm. to, to remind us of our freedom. Huh. So those are the four answers to the one question, why is this night different from all other nights of the week? But here I'm going to wrap it up. I've been saying four, 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 four cups of wine, four kinds of kids, four questions, and I'm going to throw a loop in there. There is one additional cup, believe it or not. No. I don't have it right here. But we No. Elijah's cup. What? Because remember I mentioned those four promises? Yeah. Well, all four of those promises were actually realized. But the fourth promise for the rabbis was a promise that was yet to be fulfilled. And that promise was that all of humanity would be free. And that all the people of the world would live in peace and harmony. And that has not yet come. So Elijah's cup sits there with the hope that Elijah, who will tell us that that day is soon, that Elijah will come and tell us that, and that we will celebrate with great freedom. So we go back to that punchline of our Seder. Until all are free, none are free. And Elijah's cup helps us remember that very important message that we need to remember the past, that we were slaves once, so that we can work today for a time in the future where everyone will be free, free, free. One Amazing. More free, that makes four frees. Four frees, that is for sure. Uh, for Rabbi, sure. <laughs> Rabbi Gross, thank you so much for that. That was really insightful, really valuable, really helps to make some sense of why the number four is so important for Passover. I, um, I have a couple comments for you here. Um, Sarah Miller loves the idea of this differentiated instruction, which as educators, we really appreciate, right? The idea that these four kids all learn in different ways. And we know that all kids learn differently. So that's a pretty amazing thing. We have a, a beautiful family connection happening here. So first of all, Sharon Wolfson is right with me when she says the way to make matzah taste good, you're not just to bry it, but you put a little shmia on it. But um, not only that, but Renee Carroll, our very own Miss Renee says hi to Bubby in Maryland. It's really nice. I, you know, it's like a nice no, thing connecting. that's happening. We're, we're connecting. making connections. We are making connections. So Rabbi Gross, I don't know about you all, but in my house, we are so close to the epic annual, or not annual, because it's way more than once a year, but daily meltdown before dinner. So I need to go make dinner for my family. Will you please lead us in the mozi so that we can go make dinner for our families? And then we should probably tell some folks to be back with us here on the HCRJ Facebook Live for Shabbat Shiga'on this Friday at this 11 a.m. There's going to be sharing Shabbat, which will be up on our Facebook too, but that's a YouTube video that people can watch whenever they're feeling the Shabbat spirit. We should also say that on Sunday, you and I 
at 10 a.m. are going to be playing and singing some of our Passover favorites. Fantastic. Any surprises for Shabbat Shagaon? Are we... Uh, oh, let's just say cool? it's fire. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi goes, please lead us in the mozi. Well, before I do, what are you, what are you making for dinner? Oh, this is, uh, this is not our finest work here. We are having breakfast for dinner. Ah, got to eat up your chametz. Got We're it. Fish tacos for dinner. Oh, all right. Oh, nice. Nice too. Yeah. Delish. Oh, I had Delish. a little visitor back there. All right, all Rabbi right. Gross, let's take it home. All right. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, amoti lechem min ha'aretz. Amen. Thanks everybody for watching and being with us on Live at Five on HDRJ's Facebook and the Walker family who are with us on Zoom. See ya!